everyone. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Alicia and I am the Director of Education and Residencies at Peninsula School of Art in Fish Creek, Wisconsin. Today, I am very excited to introduce our inaugural Artists in Residence, Heather Newber and Sarah Willitson. The Artists in Residence program is very meaningful to Peninsula School of Art's history and mission. To see it come to fruition after years of planning is certainly a moment to celebrate. And what better way than getting to know our newly arrived residents? Heather and Sarah will be with us for six weeks in an immersive studio experience that prioritizes time and space for them to engage fully in their practice, experiment, and pursue new projects and ideas. First, we'll hear from Heather Newber. Heather is an interdisciplinary artist whose work focuses on the dynamics of personal relationships and social interaction through the exploration of form and materials. She earned her BFA in metalsmithing and jewelry design from Edinburgh University of Pennsylvania and MFA from Indiana University. In addition, Heather has studied at Haystack Mountain School of Crafts, Penland School of Crafts, Peters Valley School of Craft, and Touchstone Center for Craft. An avid instructor, she has taught multiple disciplines at Indianapolis Art Center and beyond. Hi, I'm Heather Newber. Um... I am a interdisciplinary artist living in the Twin Cities um, and very thankful to have this residency at the Peninsula School of Art. So thank you to all of the supporters of the school. Um, wanna introduce you a little bit to my work. Uh, this was pretty early in my work, um, uh, a series of, work thinking about what we reveal or conceal about ourselves. And so I was making these um, forms and putting small quilts inside and leaving the details very hidden, mostly for the viewer, the wearer on the back. Um, thinking about like how close someone needs to be to us in order to see those details of ourselves or what we share with them. Um, so this, is some work that I'm actually hoping to revisit during this time. Um, later, I started really exploring um, different materials, um, steel, uh, aluminum, building materials. My grandfather was a builder. And before his 100th birthday, I went in and raided his barn um, for materials and found formica and uh, aluminum and copper and all sorts of different plastics and things um, and started making work about our relationship. Previously, my work had really been uh, influenced by my grandmother's aesthetic. Um, and so now this was me starting to explore other relationships um, and, and dynamics. When I went off to grad school, I really started to explore sculpture and installation more. Um, this piece was thinking about ideas of assimilation, um, how we try to mask ourselves or present ourselves um, to fit in, um, and how we fit in with the society or community around us. Um, installation, uh, I was really drawn to the idea of responding to a space, res responding to a community. Um, I did a, a summer long residency with the Bird Cell Project in uh, South Bend, Indiana, where I got to do a full installation in this massive industrial space, um, which was really exciting and pretty daunting, uh, but I loved it. Um, and I got to work with lots of different materials uh, to tell the story. Um, I was thinking about that community, uh, the inequity, inequities within that community um, and stratification um, and how uh, there was a sense of isolation even within that community. Uh, I've continued to balance sculpture and jewelry. Um, a lot of times working very sculpturally within the jewelry, um, 
they sort of have a communication back and forth between the two different bodies of work. While I'm here, I'm hoping to bring those two bodies of work closer together. So here in these pieces, I was thinking about the, the weight of a smile, um, the different kinds of smiles that we give as we're presenting to others. Um, sometimes they can be very weighted and heavy, uh, sometimes light and airy or empty, um, other times really holding a burden or some baggage with them. Uh, for my thesis work, I was continuing to work on um, relational dynamics. Um, this piece was about my father and how he presented the entire time he was ill. Um, you would ask him how he's doing and he would always say, I'm doing okay, I'm doing okay. Um, and thinking about what that cost him to, you know, you know, was it a positive or a negative for him? Um, this was 400 plus yards of his hospital gowns that I tore into strips and then sewed around cording um, to a mass that was approximately equal to his. Um, And then this piece was done later after my father had passed, um, thinking about my mom and the weight that she carried for all of us. Um, I, using the same cording, she, I covered it with domestic fabrics, um, like tablecloths, and her sort of go-to coping was to, to make dinner, to you know, make us feel at home, um, and how uh, that played into our healing, but also um, helped her cope, but also like masked what was happening at the time. Along the same time, I'm still continuing to do production work and jewelry work that's much more approachable. Um, I use a lot of just simple line and forms in my jewelry, a lot of steel um, wire, but now I'm transitioning more into using some precious metals as well. Like this steel has some 14 karat gold um, solder on it. The jewelry I make can be very approachable, but then also um, a little what people call art jewelry. Uh, so this ring is rather large. Um, I love a good statement piece. Um, it has uh, formica and a, very, a large aquamarine to it, and then all sterling silver. And I'm still considering the, the same ideas in my jewelry of conceal and reveal, um, how close people need to be to see details um and ideas of presenting and for lots of people it may just be pretty jewelry um and that's okay but for me when i'm making i really need to be thinking about these things it um it fulfills me it helps me to get ideas out it helps to push the work forward um and make it worthwhile for me um but if any if one person just says, oh, I like that ring because it's blue. I'm happy with that too. The work can be anything it needs to be for, for each individual person. Um, I started working in glass uh, right before the pandemic, actually um, about like six months or so beforehand um, and started making um, wire forms and blowing the glass into it. I knew as soon as I got into the glass blowing that I wanted to combine uh, metal and other materials with it. Um, it was very freeing. It's a totally different kind of making. Um, it's a bit of a group sport. <laughs> um, it's very active where I've been tinkering away in my studio, you know, all by myself, suddenly I'm in this uh, community, uh, moving around with other people and making 
um, and really exploring. And I feel that uh, dipping into other mediums just helps my work grow each time. I am sort of a collector of um, disciplines and materials. I, I love different materials and bringing them into my work. Um, it helps me see the world in a different way and in, in new perspective. Um, as I was making these pieces, um, I really thought about like the lens that we see the world through, our own experiences and individual um, uh, lives have, you know, colored our, our lenses in different ways. Um, we've had different barriers that we've had to walk through or build around, um, and that affects how we see the world. Um, and then I took a couple of these pieces and um, created this sculpture, a shared breath. Um, and this was very much in the middle of the pandemic and just thinking about um, how we, we share with each other, um, how we rely on one another, um, the distance between us at times, um, and even still with that distance, we can still be dependent upon each other. During this residency, I am really hoping to sort of meld my two studies together, um, bringing the elements of the jewelry making and elements of the sculpture together to make a new body of work um, so that they aren't so separate. Uh, continuing to think about community and relationships. Um, and instead of where my work previously had been a lot about the separation between us, really want to focus more on what brings us together and how we can build um, together. So thank you. I hope to be able to see some of you before I leave that you come and visit the studio and see the work that Sarah and I are making. And again, thank you for this amazing opportunity. Thank you, Heather. Also in residence is Sarah Willitson. Working mainly with paint and various collage elements, Sarah's work explores concepts of abstract spaces and objects guided by her surroundings. She earned her BA in studio art and graphic arts from Lakeland University and MFA in painting from Northern Illinois University. Sarah's work has been featured in New American Paintings, frequent regional and national exhibitions, and permanent collections. She has participated in numerous residencies, including Studio 224 and Frank Juarez Gallery, among others. Sarah works as a visual artist and graphic designer in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Take it away, Sarah. So thank you for inviting me here as one of the first artists in your residency program. I'm really excited to be here. Um, so for this first image, um, I created this piece in 2018 for a solo show in Milwaukee. Uh, I was starting to explore my visual language by using a lot of my collage, ele collage elements I'd created or collected over the years to make these curated intentional pieces. And these pieces required a lot of restraint as they typically work on surfaces until the entire thing is covered. Um, but this, this piece gives an organized deconstructed view that can typically only be seen early on in my creative process. There's a really delicate balance to this that um, while I really like the result, it was, like I said, it was very difficult for me to do as I like to put layers and layers on my pieces. And this mixed media piece is comprised of many elements, um, found materials, laser cut shapes based on some found materials, uh, various drawing and painting mediums. And I used all of these to create this space that feels contained and somewhat familiar to me. So much like the first piece I discussed, this one starts to combine my visual language with a more tactile medium. I learned a lot about materials while making this piece. And while it was still a struggle to keep things as simple as possible, I feel like this piece was really successful with showing my visual language in a more three-dimensional way. This piece is what I would call a soft piece that I constructed with wood, batting, canvas, and modeling paste. 
when I was in LA for a residency in 2015, I saw a painting done by a Japanese artist that was on a soft surface and I really wanted to replicate that. So even though it's pretty difficult to work on at times, I like the challenge of working on a soft non-traditional shape when collaging a piece. And this one I really focused on using a lot of dark colors, um, especially when it came to the collage material, as well as having a strong composition to show, you know, to give a sense of space. So I tend to work over some of my pieces after they've been completed after a couple of years. Um, and this is one that I had also shown in a solo show in 2018 in Milwaukee. Um, and I repurposed it in 2020. Um, it's a wood panel that I had adhered some canvas to. And when I worked on this again in 2020, I only added a couple collage elements just to give it more of a sense of space and to give, to show more of a foreground and a background. So I rarely work on a blank surface and this is a really good example of that. Um, in grad school, I took a couple printmaking classes and this is from one of my woodcut projects that it just was not successful. So I was left with a lot of prints and I decided to paint over those. And this um, imagery is from a reference photo I took when I was in LA during my residency. Um, so you can really see, you can see some of the marks from the woodcut underneath all of the acrylic paint. And similar to image five, my goal with this piece was to collage over the existing canvas on panel um, with just one pass while focusing on the composition and keeping the tones darker on the left, um, just to give, to give more of a foreground and then kind of lightening things up as it went to the right to give the impression of a background and to perceive these uh, objects and structures in, in space. So this is one of the most difficult shapes I've ever worked with. My goal with this piece was to depict space while not overworking the surface, which I tend to do. And the title Snare 5 refers to the structure depicted and how difficult it would be to maneuver around the space. Um, I typically don't use a lot of ladder imagery, but with this piece, I was in a three-person show in Milwaukee last August, and one of the other artists, he was uh, using a lot of ladder imagery in his work. And our goal for the show was to create a lot of pieces that just, you know, tied in with each other and worked well with each other. And so I went through the other two artists imagery and, and you know, took a lot of their ideas and brought them into my work. And this piece came together by cutting up several other pieces that just weren't working for me. After gluing these together, I added four quick gradient brush strokes to make walls that are interacting with each other. It's largely based on my relationship with my partner and adjusting to living with a significant other. So I built this panel with pieces from a dollhouse a friend had given to me. And a lot of my process is visible in this piece as I had really built up some of the areas with collage material and paint early on, then later decided to scrape a lot, a lot of it off once it got too busy and chaotic. Um, I was thinking of, about what it takes to maintain a home while making this as I had recently moved in with my significant other and was overwhelmed with the amount of space we had to take care of. Thank you so much, Sarah. It was a pleasure to hear from both of you today. Toward the end of their residency, we will be hosting an in-person end of session studio tour. If any of you tuning in are in the area, I hope you will join us and see what Heather and Sarah have been working on during their time with us. In the meantime, follow us on social media for more behind the scenes updates. Thanks so much.